Firstly, I would like to thank to the FAO and the rest of the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share our work. On behalf of all those who have participated in any way in this initiative, particularly the members of the Silva Mediterranean Working Group on Urban and Periurban Forestry, we hope you enjoyed and find it of interest. I'm gonna talk about one of the main disturbances associated with urban and periurban forests and have been mentioned by Wendy before, which is the allergenic pollen emitted from vegetation during the flowering period, and which in fact are the main source of primary biological atmospheric particles to the atmosphere of all categories of bioresol. These pollen emissions are considered one of the main functions of ecosystems that are perceived as negative for human well-being, with a great effect on air quality and on the health of the population. Pollen in the breathable fraction of air is considered the main causative agent of allergy response in the world population, with a higher incidence in urban environments than in rural ones. The World Health Organization classifies allergies related to the presence of pollen in the air as a perennial disease that generates recurrent symptoms in any time in life. The economic cost associated with each allergy individual has been estimated at about 9,060 euros per year, including days of absenteeism and presenteeism in a school and work. And with growth expectation in recent and future years due to the impact of climate change. In urban settings, the situation can be aggravated due to the interactions with other pollutants, but also due to the diversity, intensity, and proximity of emission sources and the lack of planning when designing and manage urban forests. If we review the causes that have generated the increasing allergenicity of urban forests, we find among them the massive use of low number of ornamental species, the botanical cessation, the introduction of allochthonous or exotic species, the spread of invasives, or the interaction with pollutants and the effects of the climate change. Therefore, in order to characterize the specific allergenic potential of the urban plant species and urban forests per se, and to be able to establish and implement measures to mitigate the allergenic impact, the Breeding in the Parks initiative was created, which has developed two tools to this purpose. To this purpose the value of potential allergenicity, the BPA, and the Index of Urban Green Zones Allergenicity, the EUSA. The first step is to identify the biological attributes that contribute to the allergenic behavior of a species, and three factors have been identified. The type of pollination, since plants that use the wind as a transport vector emit huge amounts of pollen, the duration of the pollination period, since the more extensive, the longer there is pollen in the air, and the intrinsic capability of the pollen grains to generate an allergen reaction in sensitive individuals. For each attribute, a value ranging from 0 to 1, 2, 3, or 4 is assigned according to the characteristics presented by the species. The combination of these three attributes result in a specific a species specific value of potential allergenicity, which we will range between zero and 36 and will allow each species to be assigned a class of allergenicity, which can be zero, low, moderate, high, or very high. This value may be used as a criteria when selecting a species to be introduced in any element of urban forest. Once the value of potential allergenicity of each species is known, and considering the biometric parameters of diameter and chrome height, the allergenic potential of any green element can be estimated by applying the index of allergenicity of urban green zones, which will result in a value understood between zero, uh, like null allergenicity, to one maximum allergenicity being 0 
the threshold value, which we will indicate the risk that a visit to this space during the flowering period of allergenic species may represent for an allergic person. And this was the origin of the reading in the Mediterranean Parks Initiative in which thanks to the collaborative work of the member of the Silva Mediterranean Working Group and other associations, the index was applied to more than 40 urban forests in six Mediterranean countries. To assess the allergenicity, an exhaustive analysis of the most frequent families, genera and botanical species in Mediterranean urban forests was carried out and the value of potential allergenicity of the most frequent was estimated, finding that some with the highest class of allergenicity are of Mediterranean origin. The application of the user to the different urban forests in Spain and at both shores of the Mediterranean Sea allowed to know aspects that participate in allergenicity, such as the design of the elements, the most contributing species, the handling and maintenance carried out all the assistance of other emission sources in their surroundings. And to conclude, and as a guideline that can help mitigate the impact of allergenic emissions on air quality and the health of the population, we highlight the importance of the diversification of species at all multifunctional levels, the proper management and maintenance of the species and species and planning in the selection of a species and in the design of the space in which they will be incorporated. And before concluding, I would like to thank all the people and institutions that have made this initiative possible so that urban forests are more breathable, healthier, and inclusive spaces for all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. It's so interesting. And <laughs> uh, I, I see that you have just published a paper in Urban Forestry and Urban Greening. <laughs> Thank you yeah, very yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And, <laughs> and you see, we have now four cases focusing on different aspects of urban forests, but we all try to um, derive more uh, diverse uh, ecosystem services or benefit and minimize any potential negative impact uh, associated with urban trees. And um, then we are going to move to the panel discussion. We are going to have three invited um, talks highlighting their uh, research and especially the uh, opportunities and challenges we are facing in um, using or implementing urban forests to have cleaner cities. And now we are going to have our first keynote uh, panelist presentation, um, Mr. Mr. Marak, he uh, is an, um, he had been an Indian Forest Service officer, and then uh, he has served for the government as the principal uh, secretary uh, to the state government of uh, Meghalaya, India. And um, currently, he is an advisor conducting Green Summit for Northern Eastern State of India, which provide a very interesting platform or interaction platform for policymakers, implementers, and grassroots workers to highlight environmental issues relevant to Northeast India. Um, yes. Um, Mr. the floor is yours. Are you here? Hello, Wendy Shen. I just got a message from Mr. Malak uh, saying the power is down. So he tried to come back and hope uh, he, he can be reconnected after power is up. Okay, so, so um, 
we need to wait. So can we move the second presenter up? Uh, okay. Um, so, okay. <laughs> so now it's your turn, uh, Sam. Oh, let's move the second presenter up, okay? Okay, well, I'm good. Okay, so Clara, are you agree? Uh, do you agree? Yes, please continue with the next speaker. Okay, okay, that's good. So now we, we will move on to the next uh, speaker. Um, Dr. Yin is an associate professor of the Department of Resource and Environment, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, he also served as the director of Shanghai Urban Forest Ecosystem Long-Term Monitoring and Research Station. His research focuses on what happened at the interface of urban forest, soil, macroclimate, and air pollutant, uh, covering many aspects. <laughs> and uh, so he can tell very successful story about how urban forests interact with the environment and play their in key roles as different scales in urban uh, environment. So the floor is yours, um, please, Sam. Okay, Wendy, uh, could you see the slide? Yes. Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, Wendy. Hello, everyone. I'm Sha Ying. I'm from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today, I want to share you some work we have done in the last few years. The title, yeah, yeah, just like this. And uh, I, uh, why I choose this title? I think, you know, the answer must be true. The green infrastructures actually could uh, and uh, not uh, urban air pollution. So that's why we are gathering here today. But what's the more important is how we can prove this and make it better. So this is uh, first air pollution. I want to talk about PM 2.5 and uh, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAH, as the typical air pollutants in the city. They are mainly man-made pollutants, very stable and measured long distance with harmful effects to urban residents. Urban uh, air pollutants could deposit from the air to plant, soil, and water by dry and wet depositions, and sometimes back to the air by resuspension and release. The vegetation of plants could play an important role in the biogeochemical cycling. The dry deposition on leaves and abs absorptions are the key roles to remove air pollution. So what's the main influential factors between air pollutants and vegetation? A study can quote four aspects. Let's see that, including tree species, pollutants, meteorological factors, and plant community. If we look at, uh, we could say tree species actually means functional trees of uh, of trees and leaves, which we could call this internal factors. And the pollutants and the meteorological factors are external conditions. These two interact with each other at the surface of leaves and branches, and also with a well-designed plant community. That's how we could have a cleaner city and human well-being. So as I said, the questions are concerned. We're concerned about the urban forest and air pollutants should be seen from different scales and have different questions. In the internal and external factors in the first scale, we focus on the leaf and tree species. The question is, which tree species has better capacity to remove air pollutants? And the second scale, we focus about the plant communication uh, community, what are the effects of landscape design on pollutants removal? And the third scale, we should look at the whole urban area, how to plan land use types to help improve urban air quality. So let's start with the first scale, what happened in trees and leaves? There are also two questions we would like to answer. So how do leaves absorb aeroparticles, and which tree species 
should be selected. Uh, in our study, we choose 14 typical tree species in Shanghai with four conifers and 10 broad leaves. Leaves and branches are both sampled. We use a wind tunnel method and a smoke chamber method to determine the PM2.5 dry deposition velocity on leaves and branches. And a 3D X-ray microscope is used to observe where are the particulate matters on the surface and in the leaves. So let's answer the first question. How do leaves absorb particles? As the figure shows, the co uh, coagulation effect happened on the leaves, which means small particles combine and accumulate into large sized particles. And uh, that helps leaves to absorb or fix more particles in the air. And from the right finger, the functional trees of leaves, we found that the single leaf area, specific leaf weight, and the surface free energy were the main influential factors of particle deposit on leaves. 